All right, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be having a look at all the different ways that duplicates can destroy our liquid locks. I recently had a lot of comments on one of my previous videos where people were talking about how corner locks and different things are all very susceptible to problems. Um, people were discussing duplicates exhaling and displacing blobs of water and moving um, hot or cold substances through liquid locks. And so I want to go through and kind of look at which one of these are kind of conspiracy theory myths and which ones of them are plausible um, problems that are you know likely to take place. So as you can see, what we've got here is we've got a standard liquid lock here on the top. We've got gas locks here. We've got corner locks, um, the double corner lock with the vacuum in the middle. And then we've got these vertical uh, two tiers and then the jump locks, which are the vertical uh, three tier. On each one, I've put oxygen mixed with hydrogen on the other side, just simply so that we have nice contrast so that it's easy to see. And they are all perfectly clean. As you can see, there's no contaminants or anything. All the blobs and um, this, the liquids that I'm using vary from one to the next, just to try to give a little bit of a variety. And what I'm thinking we're going to do is I'm going to do one for exhaling and we will do one for peeing and then one for moving or transporting hot liquids. Um, unfortunately, I don't believe the duplicates are going to stay put where we put them. So we'll have to use mesh tiles to ensure that they stay placed where we need them to be for the purpose or of the experiment. Now, to my understanding, one of the, uh, the common misconceptions that I hear people talk about is whether or not these duplicates are going to breathe out CO2 and it is going to somehow displace liquid blobs and, you know, stuff of that nature. And I am under the impression, and we will get to uh, see it more in detail here in a minute, that the duplicate um, cannot exhale somewhere where they cannot inhale or something along those lines. And that obviously when they're standing on a blob of water, even if it's only, you know, 36 grams, that they're not going to be able to displace it. What actually is going to happen is, is that if the blob has an available tile to enter, it's going to go into that tile. Stuff such as the solid hydrogen would is another thing where I think that because they're holding their breath to begin with, they won't actually exhale. So let's start off with our first ones here. So just like that, we have them all sealed in with the mesh tiles. So we'll be able to see if any gas or liquids move and if so, where they move. So right off the bat, we can see, obviously, the guy that's in the traditional liquid lock is completely submerged. And so there's nothing moving. We're not seeing any um, packets of CO2 movement. Same as our gentleman that's here stuck in the gas lock. Um, worst case scenario, I can imagine that maybe a CO2 uh, packet comes and travels up a little bit more off the side. Now this gentleman here who's sitting on a blob of um, water, this guy just died. Um, this guy's sitting on 36 grams of water. And as you can see that he's exhaling on the tile, but it is not affecting the water in any shape or form. The CO2 that he's exhaling is all just coming over into the oxygen side here and our hydrogen is remains unaffected. Same thing with the guy in the vacuum. He never exhaled in our vacuum. He never moved or ruined the vacuum and there is no CO2 there whatsoever. This gentleman here, or a lady I should say, is standing in the liquid and again, her exhaling is not displacing any of the liquids. The CO2 is going on to the side with the oxygen. I've noticed that the CO2 tends to do this. 
And I'm not 100% sure if it's because it has available space and it's able to go there or if it's because this is the side that it's pulling the air from. So that's the side that it's exhaling from. Um, nonetheless, it is not displacing the liquid that uh, they are standing in. And the same thing for this one down here as well. The exhaling is not adjusting or affecting anything whatsoever. So judging by what I'm seeing here, I think it's reasonable to conclude that an exhaling duplicate is not going to displace any water packets, um, particularly ones that are on the corner in the fashion of a liquid lock, even if they're only 36.4 grams. Also worth noting, the bleach stone is not emitting, right? Because it's sitting in liquid. People talk all the time about, oh, if they drop something, that's going to um, off gas and which is going to break the liquid lock. And generally speaking, when anything that off gases is sitting in liquid, um, the liquid stops the off gas from happening. So from that aspect, I don't think that it's something that we really need to worry about. I don't see it happening. For the next column, we're doing the uh, peeing on the floor. Now, I'm guessing that, you know, like most pee, it's going to overflow and contaminate the locks. Wherever the pee goes, it's going to start to off gas polluted oxygen, of course. Um, this will be less problematic potentially on the larger locks, even though it will mix in, but it'll go all over the place and we'll end up with polluted oxygen everywhere. Same thing with these here. Um, we will see exactly what happens with them. Some of them I think will be broken and some of them I don't think necessarily will. So let's have a look. I'll put that one there so the urine can go on both sides. Same thing for this as well. Same thing for this. I will do them all like this. What if we put him right inside the liquid lock, maybe, and see how it affects it? And then this one, maybe we'll put him beside. Now, for this specific test, I'm going to be using the duplicate stat selector because we are going to increase um, their need to have a bowel movement so that we don't have to wait too long. You can see this guy standing in a vacuum and he's not exhaling. He's not breaking the vacuum, right? Because he can't breathe in the vacuum, so he doesn't break it by standing in it. And he's going to die before he pees, probably. All right. So it looks like they all peed. So let's, I guess we'll start at the top here. So just as we were guessing, um, the polluted water has overflown everything here and we are now off gassing. So we've got a mixture of the carbon dioxide with the polluted water here, and then this will create polluted oxygen as well. Um, but the liquid lock remains intact for the most part, even though it would need to be cleaned up. The gas lock um, is still functioning, even though it's been filled. And that's kind of what's interesting about the gas locks is that they are relatively unstable, but at the same time, they kind of fix themselves and just work regardless because the carbon dioxide is still going to try to stay in this lower section. I think it would be stronger had I actually done a full... Um, square bottom rather than the step setup, but um, I think that these are actually a lot better than you would think, and I do think that this should be built um, probably like this, because that allows you to have something like this take place, which would allow you to mop it out and would hold this more secure, because a fluid could go 
they're not going to um, urinate or drop so much fluid that this would be completely full. So you would always have that carbon. And then even when you clean this out, it would just, the carbon would resort itself out. Gas locks are definitely um, underrated in a lot of ways. Here we have our corner lock. Um, and as we can see, the urine did dismantle this corner lock. It, um, has kind of leaked onto both sides and is now off gassing all over the place. Uh, this one we just discussed, he didn't even get a chance to because he's in the vacuum and the vacuum remains unbroken. The guy that was standing in the double stack, uh, vertical broke the double stack vertical. And the individual that was beside the triple jump block, um, it is still here and would have to get cleaned up but remains intact for the most part i'd like to rerun this with this guy potentially on the side but i think that they would still have a good chance that it would um that it would break the lock anyways if it went off the side it would be very dependent on how stable your lock was what uh, materials you were using and how much material was if it was going to displace it based off of uh, the mass. For our last test we're going to do is we're going to look at temperatures. I hear a lot of people in the comments saying, you know, oh, that you're going to run, oh, he's going to grab something hot or cold and it's going to run through and it's going to ruin the blob. And generally speaking, you know, no matter what type of lock you're dealing with, if you run something that's a crazy extreme temperature, there's going to be consequences to it. I don't know if that's necessarily a problem with the liquid lock or whatever lock you're using and it's more of just the duplicate doing something that they shouldn't have done it's more of a user error at that point um so but for the most part i think that we're going to see that most of these are going to be completely fine moving liquids through them um, but we will go ahead and test it i'm going to use um an extreme temperature i'm thinking maybe we'll do uh, igneous at a thousand degrees celsius um just to help you know debunk any conspiracies that you know it, it wasn't hot enough or anything of the sort so let's go ahead and brush in some igneous and we will put it at a thousand, whatever, a thousand twelve, doesn't matter. And we'll put enough that they're actually going to have to do a couple trips through the lock. Um, to be thorough. Obviously, whatever materials your locks are made out of is going to help or hurt you. the luck that we would get two of them that can't dig. So you can see that they're starting to scold. 
both of these bottom locks seem to have broken. The corner locks and the corner lock with the vacuum is holding. It's taking them about three to four trips through to make it work. And everybody's moved their pile so far. Our gas lock is still holding for the most part without a hitch. Um, any carbon that's here is likely just um, from an overflow of them exhaling CO2. And the hydrogen has not mixed with the oxygen at all. In this top one here, um, our brine is holding solid enough mass that it has absorbed the temperature and some carbon sitting there as well our corner lock still holding strong moved everything and there's no problem uh, the vacuum here is holding as well both of these blobs are in place and both of the vertical locks have fallen apart so there we go so if we look at um everything together um, our traditional has held for the most part. There's been no issues. Minus the peeing everywhere didn't do it any favors. The gas lock um, has actually performed extremely well in all three examples. Even the one with the urine we're seeing, um, there's no mixture of the gas and the lock itself is still intact. And on this one as well, so... The corner lock survived um, all of the tests except for getting peed on directly. The vacuum corner locks um, survived all of the tests as well. Um, what happened to our guy that we peed on him here? Or that peed on? I don't know. Did I delete him? Anyhow, the um, but the vacuums are all perfectly intact still. Um, oh yes, I believe he went and then I came up and I had cleaned him off. And then these bottom ones here, uh, the vertical locks didn't perform that well. The, the two tier vertical, uh, broke two times. The three tier broke once. Um, but we can see here clearly that, you know, these locks are, the, the corner lock performed decent. The double corner lock with the vacuum, all three vacuums are still intact. Um, and the gas locks are still intact. So the weakest of the bunch definitely seems to be the two-tier vertical. Uh, followed by, I'm guessing, the jump lock. Of course, the jump lock has the added benefit of not getting the sopping debuff. Um, but keeping in mind that this is all hinges on the type of materials that's going to play a big role in whether or not your locks survive but i hope you guys found this information useful and hopefully that will help uh debunk some um theories that people have in different conspiracies um i'm sure i'll hear some more in the comments but in the meantime um i'll talk to you guys later don't forget to like and subscribe and if we get any good new conspiracies i will uh, be sure to test them out thanks for watching